from Forex Traders Daily. This is your daily analysis with Ross Mullins, live from Richmond, Virginia. Hello, everyone. This is today's video analysis for April 10, 2017. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready to get started trading this week. In today's video, I'm going to do a general overview of each of the U.S. currency pairs in anticipation of this week's trading. And I'm going to highlight some of the key levels that we will look for entry and exit opportunities. Now, we are starting off this week with a fairly light news calendar, but you will want to be sure to note other events as we go throughout the rest of this week. And as always, be sure to use appropriate risk management strategies in all trade setups. Let's go ahead and get started here on the USD CHF. Over the past several weeks, we have been studying the trend since the beginning of 2017, basically the entire year so far. We see the black trend line as much of January, the red trend line as much of February, the blue trend line most of March encompassed within that downtrend, and now much of April already seeing the similar pattern and we return to an uptrend. So we've seen this pattern play out throughout the first part of the year. The question is, will that continue continue to play out? If it does, then we're looking for a continuation higher for much of the rest of this month, which is April. We are just now testing back above the 100 period simple moving average, which we haven't been above in quite a long time. Let's go ahead and zoom it in one time. Take a look. The moving average coming here, and today we are just above that moving average. So the question is, if it stays above it, do we look for the continuation a higher? Will today stay above it? Will today get back below it? Those are all questions we won't know until the end of the day today. If we're going to trade the uptrend, of course, it's always better to buy at a lower price. Buying at the highest part of the trend just never makes sense for me. And in this case, we're at the high point of the trend. So what we need to really do is wait for it to dip a little bit. I think if you're going to buy this, you want it to come back down at least to the yellow zone 006075 top of the moving average back to the green trend line if you look back here with a circle as you can see some support at that yellow zone before or even just before that where the market broke above the yellow zone sat down on top of it one two three four five days within the midst of that red trend line and then made the new high. So what we're looking for is this yellow zone to become our support, to give us an opportunity to dive in with low risk, high reward, targeting back to the green zone or maybe even the orange zone at the top of the chart. Now, if it breaks that orange zone and those last significant highs, I think we could be looking for a much more significant high all the way up into the 1.02s or even the 03. So keep an eye on that breakout if it gets above the 0.14560 level over the next coming days. Moving over to the euro dollar, similar situation, just the exact opposite. You see the same trend lines, January, February, March, and April in the trend line. So again, very similar. The question is, will that continue? Will that turn around and go back in the other direction? We won't know for quite some time, but definitely something to watch. Look at the black box here, the intersection of the red and the blue trend line at the bottom. We're in a really significant area of congestion. We've been here before. The question is, will it break it and go lower all the way back down into the 1.03s, or are we going to find some support and turn back higher? Well, at the current moment, zooming it in here on the daily, we're at support. We don't want to go short at the low. Remember, buy low, sell high. You don't want to sell something at the lowest point. You want to sell it at a higher point. So in this case, that would be a recoil back to or return back to uh, 1.0605, 1.0620. That's the bottom of the pink shaded area. We've seen resistance here before at the pink zone. We look back here at the red trend line, resistance here. That would also, once again, be underneath the 100 period moving average if it makes it back into the low 600s. So that becomes the place to sell, not at the very bottom of the trend. So if we're going to buy it and it, or sorry, sell it and it doesn't get back to the pink zone, we need it to break the yellow zone to go lower down to the purple shaded area, which it hasn't done. Uh, reversal for this currency pair, and really the over on the dollar franc as well, would be the break of the moving average and the green trend line. We then look for reversal to go back in the other direction for both the franc and the euro dollar. Moving over to the GBP USD, uh, the pattern here, uh, we've been studying this black trend line at the top, the black trend line at the bottom, the down, up, down, up, and now we're in the midst of what could be potentially the next down phase and a turn lower here for the GBP USD. So we're looking for opportunities if that's going to take place, if it's going to continue to go down. Look at this. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this black box. We saw congestion here, but probably most important is to note the green trend line showing us lower highs within that black box from the highest high at the top. Today, 
we're breaking or at least attempting to break underneath these last lows. So if it stays underneath the yellow zone, that's 123.90, 124.10, staying underneath there, we could be looking for the continu the breakout and the continuation lower. Now, it hasn't stayed underneath there on the daily. Let's not get uh, ahead of ourselves. We are still within that yellow zone and could see some reversal even back to the orange shaded area and the green trend line so i'd love to see an open and close even today closing back underneath the yellow zone will increase my confidence that it's going to go down towards the green zone so that's what we need to see we need to see today close under the yellow zone under 24 would be great and it turned down to the green zone or lower maybe even all the way down to the black trend line and into the 122s again we've seen resistance here look at the blue circle resistance at the yellow zone before underneath by the way the 100 period simple moving average right around the 124 15 or so level so we need to stay under the moving average under the yellow zone by the end of the day today increases our confidence in the next fall down if it doesn't do that then we could be looking for a pullback up to the mid to upper 124s for the GBP USD moving on over to the USD CAD this pair has been a little bit of a trouble one over the past couple of days we've had oil influences we've had data influences we've had a lot of trouble on this currency pair so at least at the moment I'm letting it do what it's going to do and I'm not really looking to trade it but if you take a look at this rising channel that's an interesting aspect here if we're going to buy it if you're looking to buy it you would probably look to buy it at the bottom of that channel with lower risk we are above the 100 period moving average on the daily time frame but I think if you're looking for the uh, a long scenario it needs to go down and you also if you're looking for a long scenario you want oil to go down rising US CAD typically you're looking for oil to go down so pay attention to oil we also have some significant news in the middle part of this week out of Canada with rate information so keep an eye on that if you're looking to go short uh, I think it probably needs to break this channel uh, probably even the 3300 the the moving average here around the yellow zone probably your best opportunity to go short or it rallies much higher, maybe even as high as the 3,500 level, the yellow zone at the top of the chart. So nothing real confident here with this rising channel. If you try to sell it, at least get it as close to the highs as you can. If you're going to buy it, at least get as close as possible to the lows as you can for the U.S. CAD. Moving to the U.S. Yen, uh, this one, we actually have a trade holdover from last week, 110.70 uh, inside the pink zone. If it continues to go up, great. That will be uh, a boost for the current position we're holding since last week, uh, but no guarantees there. We are trying to break through the blue zone and the 111 30 or so level 30 35 uh, we're trying to get through there now uh, but it has been so far unsuccessful we bought it down here last week at the pink shaded area so we definitely want to see it get through 111 30 35 uh, a target back to 112 is the green shaded area and of course above there we'd look for it to go higher let's go ahead and zoom it in one more time and there it is uh, the buy was at the pink shaded area if you're looking to go long and buy of course the pink or the yellow zones obviously are your areas to do that you can see that right here uh, with the support at the pink zone all the way back here into March 21st, 22nd or so. And you can see support all along that pink zone and a couple of dips to the yellow zone. So those become your better places to buy it. Next opportunity to go long if it doesn't dip is the break above the blue zone, which obviously has not done here yet. So we need it to get above the blue zone to continue going higher, dip to the pink or yellow zone, maybe other opportunities. If you're looking to go short, I think we're watching for now. Clues and evidence of resistance and reversal could be from the blue zone. Of course, that's a possibility, or maybe even as high as the green zone, just like what happened back here at the blue circle. So uh, depending on which way you're trading it, buyers are looking at the pink and the yellow zone, sellers the blue and the green zone for their trading opportunities this week on the U.S. Yen. Moving over to the AUD USD, we also have another trade down here that we're holding over from last week. Significant profit right now, 92 pips of profit on there. I have one minimal lot left on there, but I think it's very interesting. I think we could see continuation uh, lower here for this pair. The black trend lines, the direction it's been going in. Take a look at the blue circle back right here in the middle of the chart. The green zone, blue circle, 100 period moving average, right around 7,500. Why is that so important? We're underneath that today, under the moving average, under 7,500 under the green zone i think if you're going to trade it you're not looking to buy underneath here this would be a terrible place to buy it uh 
as long as it's underneath that resistance. It would likely need to break back above there. Let me zoom this in a little bit. So we're under the black trend line, under the moving average, under the green zone, which was that last support. So not a great place to buy it. The only reason to buy this is if we suddenly see reversal and it gets above all of those, so back above the moving average, back above the green zone support that you see over here on the left, back above the black trend line. So don't buy it underneath here uh, but I could think there could be some opportunities to go short as long as it stays underneath there I'd like to see today's candle close underneath there that would be a boost if we even take it down to the four hour time frame we've already seen it actually open and close uh, on the four hour so again if you're going to trade it I think uh, selling or going short you're under the green zone you want to get as close as possible 75 maybe even 75 10 giving you a better lower risk high reward opportunity to go short again if you're looking to go long this is not the time to do it. It has to give you evidence of reversal, probably back above the green zone, before you would go long on the Australian dollar. Moving over to the NZDUSD, it's a very similar situation to the uh, Australian dollar, except for the fact that the moving average is nowhere near the current market. But we've been selling this currency pair for days and weeks now, uh, three weeks at least, we've been selling this currency pair. It's been a very profitable pair. Uh, we're out of all the open positions that we were in in the previous couple of weeks, but I've already today, this is fresh today, jumped in at 69.40. I put a pending order right underneath the yellow zone. Let's zoom it in. So we see it open under the yellow zone, rally back into 69.40, 69.50, the yellow zone. Look at back here. Uh, let me just take this blue box. Put it down here at the bottom, right here with a blue box, left-hand side, red trend line. We can see a lot of resistance at the yellow zone. One, two, three days found resistance at the yellow zone. Went back to the green zone before breaking out and going back higher. So we're in a downtrend. That's the direction I want to focus in on still. Underneath the yellow zone, we look for the market to continue down where? To the green zone. That's not too hard to see. You look back here to the left. And if it can break the green zone, we could be even looking for much further back down into the 6800. So we definitely want to see that. And this fairly minimal risk. Take it down to the four hour time frame. I mean, your risk is pretty small. If you sell underneath the yellow zone, which is that last support, by the way, and it breaks above the yellow zone, that's the risk on the trade. So your stop loss is not too high uh, above there because you know that if it gets above there, probably going all the way back at least to the pink shade here. Minimal risk, uh, potential uh, target down here towards 69 or even into the 68s for the New Zealand dollar today. From Forex Traders Daily, this has been your daily analysis with Ross Mullins. If you would like to get Ross's analysis on all the currency pairs he's watching and all the trades he takes today, join him in his live trade room by clicking on the link below. Please leave any comments you have about today's video in the comments section below.